You remind me of my uh, philosophy teacher who dreamt that he was teaching his uh, class and he woke up and discovered he was. So <laughs> some, some of you probably will do that this morning while I'm speaking. Uh, I actually had my third year Greek teacher actually fell asleep teaching us Greek. Now you know it's bad when the teacher falls asleep uh, teaching uh, Greek. But I know you're alert. Last night somebody came up to me after the service and said, Dr. Geisler, we think you're smarter than Einstein. And I commended him for his insight. And he said, no, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean is there are only three people in the world who could understand what Einstein was saying. And nobody can understand what you're saying. So, <laughs> so I'll try and make this uh, short and sweet like uh, uh, everyone can uh, understand it. Uh, you know, we have uh, a problem today. Uh, we're preaching the changeless uh, truth to, an un uh, to a generation that doesn't believe in truth. Uh, we're preaching the absolute uh, truth to a generation that only believes in relatives. Everything that we believe depends on truth. We believe the Bible is true, but what if there isn't any truth? We believe we can know the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But what if there isn't any truth? You can't even get your witness off the ground to our generation because of the problem of truth. So I want to talk to you this morning about the case for truth. Pilate asked, what is truth? Now, he was sneering. He was cynical, to be sure. Ironically, the truth was standing before him there, but nonetheless, We'll ask the question sincerely. What is truth? And truth, very simply, is telling it like it is. If I say there's a brown Bible in my right hand, it's true because, in fact, there's a brown Bible in my right hand. It's telling it like it is. Uh, truth is what corresponds to the facts. If I say that there is a wooden podium here from which I'm speaking, it's true because, in fact, there is one there. Uh, truth is what matches its object. If I say it's a brown uh, glass case in my left hand, it's a true statement because that object is there. So there's nothing tricky about truth. Uh, this object is a table. It's a true statement because there, in fact, is uh, not a chair there, not a bed, but a table there. Truth is matching its object. So what is false? Well, false is what does not tell it like it is. If I said this is a Quran in my hand, that would be false. Uh, truth is what doesn't correspond to the facts. If I said this is a plastic pulpit, it would be false. Truth is what doesn't match its object. If I uh, say that this is my backpack, it's not because it's another object, a glass case. Now, the opposite of true is false is uh, the law of non-contradiction. There was a famous Muslim philosopher who had a surefire way to prove this to anyone who doubted. He said, anyone who denies the law of non-contradiction should be beaten and burned until he admits that to be beaten is not the same as not to be beaten, and to be burned is not the same as not to be burned. <laughs> so if you meet somebody who doesn't believe in the law of non-contradiction, just kick him in the shins and ask him, is that the same as not to be kicked in the shins? He will punch you in the nose, and he will say, is that the same as not to be punched in the nose? And you'll both believe in the law of non-contradiction. So truth is what corresponds to the facts. False statements do not correspond to the facts. The opposite of true is false. Now here's the truth about truth. Uh, truth is what corresponds to reality. Uh, the correspondence view of truth cannot be denied without affirming it. So suppose I say, I don't believe truth is what corresponds to reality. Then I want to ask you, does that correspond with reality? If it does, then you've uh, denied what you're affirming. Those who deny it assume it uh, in their very denial. Now, anything you can't deny without assuming, uh, you've self-destructed. You've hanged yourself in your own gallows. In reality, everyone holds to a correspondence view of truth. Everyone. Uh, it doesn't matter who they are, what area of life, whatever they teach, everyone holds to a correspondence view of truth. Those who deny it in theory use it in practice because, as you'll see in a moment, everyone in practice uh, practices the law of non-contradiction. 
Suppose I said to you, I can't speak a word in English. Uh, you would respond, isn't that in English? This is called, in philosophy, self-stultification. Philosophers have a big name for every simple thing. It just means self-destructs. Uh, I can't speak a word in English is a word in English. Or truth is not telling it like it is. I don't agree with your definition of truth. Well, then I want to know, isn't that telling it like it is? So he's assuming the correspondence view of truth in order to deny the correspondence view of truth. It's literally undeniable. Now, here's some arguments for the correspondence view of truth. It's implied in the ninth commandment, you shall not bear false witness. That is, don't uh, misrepresent the facts. Couldn't even keep or understand the commandment unless you believed it. It's entailed in Acts 24 when it says you can learn the truth when you verify the facts, verses 8 and 11. It's manifest in Genesis 42, 16 when Joseph said they should look at the facts so that your words may be tested to see if you are telling the truth. Uh, it was employed in the test for a false prophet whose prophecy was considered false if the word does not come to pass or come true. Everywhere the Bible, along with everyday experience, assumes a correspondence view of truth. It's utilized in everyday conversation when we consider something false if it misrepresents the facts. For example, we say, check the facts. Check it out for yourself. All of this implies a correspondence view of truth. Now, why do I do this? Because uh, current philosophy today is that truth does not correspond to reality. The truth cannot be known. There is no objective truth. When we know that the Bible implies it, our life implies it, it's essential to a legal oath when one promises to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's a correspondence view of truth. Uh, and yet there are objections that are leveled against us today. And it behooves us as believers to give a reason for the hope that's in us. Colossians 4, 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So let's try and answer some of these objections. Objection number one, Jesus said, I am the truth, not I correspond to the facts. So obviously Jesus wasn't using a correspondence view of truth. So it is objected. Response, Jesus' lips and life perfectly corresponded to the facts. Persons can represent truth as well as propositions. You don't have to have a proposition to correspond to the facts. You could have a gesture. If you ask me which way did he go and I did this, that's true if indeed he went that way. It was just a gesture. So you can have expressions, you can have persons, you can have uh, propositions, all of which correspond to the facts. Objection two, God is truth and he does not correspond to any reality beyond himself. The Bible says God is truth. Uh, now if God is truth, to what reality does he correspond? Response, God's words and actions correspond to his nature. He doesn't say anything contrary to his nature. He doesn't do anything contrary to his nature. Uh, this is what you call perfect correspondence. It's perfect correspondence because God is true to himself. 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Well, now that we know what truth is, what corresponds to the facts, we know what falsehood is, what doesn't correspond to the facts, we know that everybody... Uh, whether philosophers or practical people or the Bible believes in a correspondence uh, view of truth, can truth be known or is it really unknowable? Uh, there are a lot of objections to say that we can know the truth, that we can know the true God, that we can know that Christ is the Son of God or the Bible is the Word of God. Relativism denies absolute truth. Agnosticism denies knowing any truth. Skepticism doubts all truth. Postmodernism affirms no truth. How do we respond to these isms, all of which would undermine our faith? Agnosticism goes back to a, a man called Immanuel Kant. 
who died in the early 1800s. His philosophy was that you just can't know. Uh, now, the philosophy of Immanuel Kant uh, was that we can't know truth about reality. We can only know what appears to us, but not really is. We can only know the phenomena, not the noumena. We can only know the thing to me. We cannot know the thing in itself. Uh, that was his philosophy, and he gave a number of arguments uh, uh, for that, and any Christian who lives in the modern world has to be able to answer Immanuel Kant, because if you can't answer Immanuel Kant, you can't get your argument off the ground in favor of Christianity. Uh, he said we must remain agnostic about reality. Well, let's analyze that. Can we know the truth? Let's take our skeptical professor here, who says no one knows the truth, to which we respond, then how do you know that's true? If no one knows the truth, you couldn't know that was true. If you know that that's true, then someone can know the truth, otherwise you wouldn't be able to say that. It self-destructs. Agnosticism fails because it is self-defeating. By claiming to know the truth about reality, that we cannot know any truth about reality. That's like the Zen Buddhist who says, the Tao, T-A-O, pronounced D-O-W, the Tao is beyond thought. You say, where did you get that thought about the Tao? If he has that thought about the Tao, then the Tao can't be going beyond thought. Uh, the Tao must be thinkable or he couldn't write a book about it. And they write books about it. Skepticism. David Hume, greatest skeptic who ever lived, died the same year our country was born, 1776. He said, doubt all truth. We should doubt everything about reality. We, can't, we can only know our sense data, which are entirely loose and separate, as he said. We should suspend judgment on all truth claims about reality. Just don't come to any conclusions. Just uh, doubt uh, everything. Well, let's respond to skepticism. First of all, skepticism fails because either it is self-defeating by claiming we should be skeptical about everything, including skepticism. If you start doubting doubt, then you're back to knowing something for sure. If you start being skeptical about skepticism, then you know something uh, for sure. Or else it begs a question by claiming that doubt is the only thing that shouldn't be doubted. You know what's wrong with the agnostic? He's not agnostic about agnosticism. You know what's wrong with the skeptic? He's not skeptical about skepticism. Why should I be skeptical that I exist? If I exist, I can't deny it without existing. To deny it, it's literally undeniable. Modern philosopher Descartes said, I doubt, uh, therefore I think. I think, therefore I am. Actually, he had it reversed. You have to exist before you can even doubt. He got Descartes before De Horse. Uh, I know it's early, but they don't get any better than this. If you don't, if you don't laugh, laugh at these, you're not going to get anything to laugh at until Ergen Kanner speaks. <laughs> Rene Descartes, doubt leads to certainty. He argued that the more I doubt, the more I'm sure that I'm doubting. And the more I'm sure that I'm doubting, the more I'm certain that I exist. Hence, doubt leads to certainty. Cannot doubt everything. It is literally impossible. Uh, or if you do doubt everything, you're going to have to doubt doubt. And if you doubt doubt, then you're back to knowing for sure. Postmodernism, Jacques Derrida, makes no truth claim. Now, this is a little more subtle form. It's a, one of the dominant uh, theories today, postmodernism. We must deconstruct all truth claims. We must reconstruct as many views as possible. No reconstruction is objectively true. It's merely new. It's a very subtle attack upon uh, truth because it doesn't claim to be making truth claims, and yet it's undermining all truth claims. How do we handle postmodernism. Well, first of all, postmodernism fails because either it claims to be true and is thereby self-defeating, it is true that there is no truth, 
uh, I am sure that you can't be sure. Either it claims to be true and it's self-defeating, or it makes no truth claim and it's not even in the ball game. It hasn't even showed up at the park, uh, let alone is playing the game. There's no, uh, is, it hasn't done anything uh, to get in the realm of thought itself. In this case, it can't reject any truth claim. Why? Because if it rejected a truth claim, it has to have some basis to do it. You say, well, is that true? And if they say yes, then they're making a truth claim. Uh, it can't reject a truth claim. It's not in the ball game. It's not playing uh, in the game of truth. Further, ignoring the truth doesn't make it go away. When the truth expressed comes rolling along, sticking your head in the sand is not going to make it go away. Uh, it's like Alan Watts uh, was converted from a form of Christianity to Zen Buddhism. And you read his book, and uh, he's trying to convert you uh, to Zen Buddhism. And somebody uh, said to him, well, now you're saying that you can't know the truth, the Tao, you can't know the truth. But it looks like you're making all these truth claims in your book. Why do you write books? He said, birds fly and authors write. That's right, that was his answer. Birds fly and authors write. What does that mean? I'm not making any truth claim here. Authors, that's what authors do is write. That's what birds do is fly. But there's, there's no truth in any of my books. Well, now, if he had told me that to begin with, if he'd said on the cover, there is no truth in this book. If you're looking for truth, don't buy this book. I would never have bought the book, right? But the fact that he writes a book that he... Uh, is trying to convert you to uh, Zen Buddhism and convince you that it's true shows that he really does uh, believe in truth. 